Thank you very much for joining us today. Now, thousands of graduate teachers across the country will lose their salaries this month as government has refused to reinstate defaulters or biometric registration on the payroll. The controller and the accountant general's department says it will not reverse its decision to stop the salary of the affected teachers. This is despite the warning of massive labor unrest by the National Association of Graduate Teachers, NAGRAT, if government goes ahead to remove names of defaulting teachers from the payroll by the end of this month. In the studio with me is the president of NAGRAT, Christian Adaipoku. Thank you, sir, for joining us. You're welcome. So first of all, I know that you issued a statement on the 21st of April. I'll just read extracts of that statement. And it says that it has come to our notice that your ministry has instructed the controller and accountant general's department not to pay salaries to employees who do not have SNIT biometric registration. Much as we agree that you have good reasons for that decision, we wish to draw your attention that such an action, if carried out, has the potential of disturbing the peaceful environment we have enjoyed over the past few months. We therefore wish that you suspend your intended action and rather give us at least one month to educate our members. Also, secondly, we wish you would give us the list of all the teachers affected so that we can directly reach out to them. And then we will appreciate if we could work together to avoid any upheaval that this action can't wake up uh, can uh, bring and then we are confident this uh, that this will meet your prompt consideration so this is the letter uh, Nagrat wrote uh, to the ministry but first it's been a while since this process started why have the teachers not you know or why have they failed to register um, there are many reasons but uh, what I will say is that in the first place SNIT uh, biometric registration is not supposed to clean um, controller's payroll. SNIT is a different entity altogether. By law, anybody that controller pays must be uh, deducted SNIT contribution. That's fair. But the point is that if an, a different entity is doing its work and you're going to use it to clean your payroll, then it, it is fair that you inform your employees that this entity is doing some work. I will wish that everybody avails himself for that exercise because at the end of it all, I'm going to use it to clean my payroll. But Mr. Daipoku, some may disagree with you that this, uh, this will not clear the, the problem at the Controller and Accountant General's department because you're looking at electronic system where it will be hard to duplicate names. And this is, you're aware, that one of the means to clear those names. Yes, I do agree. But our point is information and sensitization. Um, the process uh, of... Uh, Biometric registration started over a year ago, but they have different ways of doing it. Sometimes they send text messages to people, go and register. Sometimes they move to certain schools, do it themselves, and so on. There have been many, many different strategies that SNIT has used. We still believe that there are many people in the hinterlands who have not been reached by SNIT. And so we're expecting that the names of all the people affected should have been published. Then education goes out, give a deadline that everybody must avail himself or herself by this deadline. And if people do not adhere to that deadline, then you can go ahead. But are we not here? Are we not here because you failed? Nagrod failed to inform your members that this is what is happening. If my memory serves me right, the warning started coming last year. So between that time and now, what were you doing? No. The warning that came last year was different from this one. Last year, controller's message was that some people didn't have their SNIT numbers on their pay slip. It's different from going to do biometric registration. Mm. And so the message that came last year is different. This is what nobody has been informed. Actually, the union was taken aback when just a week ago we heard in the news that controller is going to take this step. And we think it is really wrong because the worker has worked over the month. And um, the fact that somebody might be illegally be on the payroll doesn't mean another person should be denied his or her salary. Mm. And that is what is going to create a whole lot of... Um, and so this thing about you enrolling on the biometric system, when did this information say, if you say what was given last year, is not the same as this one? SNIT started the exercise about a year ago, but there was no indication that when we finish, anybody who does not enroll, we will send the information to controller to delete your name. There was did no you assume that there was not going to be any deletion of names on, or of those who were not in the system? They are totally not related to our pay. 
And so there was nothing for anybody to just uh, conjecture that this, were going, this was going to happen. That's the first thing. Secondly, we think that um, if SNIT had also given a deadline, that by this deadline, I'm not going to um, register any more people and I'm going to pass this on to controller, then we would have taken steps. But it has been an ongoing process. As I said, over a year ago, they started. And every day, as and when you feel convenient, because they didn't want people to be overcrowded at SNIT um, offices. So it was a gradual process that anybody can go at any point in time and register. So people have taken it for granted. If you think that there was a need for agency to finish this within a specific time, it was a matter of just giving out information to the press and then everybody be notified that by the end of, let's say, March, anybody who does not avail himself for uh, biometric registration should count himself uh, not being paid. Must we always give a deadline when you, you knew that this process was ongoing? If there's no deadline, then at my convenience, I can walk to the SNIT office at any point in time and get registered. But from the way you're talking, it seems that there was no communication at all. Meanwhile, the, the accountant general, Mr. Ba, uh, George Ba, when we spoke to him, he said that until the finance ministry reviewed the process, there was not going to be any change of mind. It presupposes that uh, there was some level of communication uh, with you, uh, the accountant general's department, and the finance ministry. No, there was no communication. But Mr. Ba is saying that based on the fact that he has been given instruction by the sector ministry. And we have not written to Mr. Ba, we have written to the Minister of um, Finance. And so we expect that the Ministry of Finance will also instruct Control and Accountant General to halt the exercise and make sure that everybody is paid, give us time to be able to sensitize our people, and then everybody who counts himself a teacher can get the chance to also enroll on the biometric. So now you're asking for a month to do this. Within four weeks, how much can be done? Oh, a lot can be done within four weeks. We're going to use the press, we're going to move to the schools and make sure that we clean up everything. And few or as many as who, who qualify to be teachers and who qualify to be paid, who have not avail themselves, we are sure we'll be able to reach all of them. But I, I also just said that Mr. Ba says that the Accountant General's Department is not changing its mind until there is a review from the Finance Ministry. How mm -hmm. are you going to pursue that? We are not perturbed about whatever statement Mr. Ba makes because he is not the decision maker. He only carries instructions. And so the person who made the decision is the one that we are dealing with. We are dealing with the Ministry of Finance. If we are able to conclude anything, it's just an, an instruction to control and contain general, and they will affect the, the industry changes. Now, you're warning that if nothing is done about this, there's going to be massive labor unrest. What does that mean? Well, what we were trying to say is that people have worked, and they have put themselves in poor position for their salary by the end of the month. So if a week to the end of the month, you come out to tell them that they are not going to be paid because of another agency's exercise, then it's really, really unfortunate. And I don't think a lot of these teachers are going to sit down. They're going to put pressure on everybody. And so for some of us will have to act in a way that will help uh, get the authorities to work. Mm. So you are saying one month, and you're very sure that it's enough to get all your members, including those in the rural areas, to get on board? Yes, because this, this is going to be something like a mop-up exercise, because SNIT has already done the lion's share. GES alone, we are over 250,000. And so if you're talking of 26,000 public sector workers, we don't think it's so much. It's something that can be done within the next one month. Now, today is the 24th of April, and if we heard Mr. Barn right, by the end of this month, all those, about 26,000 of you who are not on the biometric system would not be paid this month. And your salaries would have been processed, or the, the process would have started by now. How are you going to ensure that your members who are not on get their pay this month? It's a matter of engagement because I know that even if they are not able to get to the mainstream pay system, they have what they call um, uh, supplementary um, pay. That those who skip the normal pay deadline, they can still prepare that for them and still get them paid before the end of the month. So imagine that what you're asking for, which is the one month, you're not giving it, what will happen? Well, for now, I want to give the benefit of doubt to the minister because we, have written, we wrote to him just last Friday. I don't know whether he has even read it this morning. So we will want to give him the benefit of doubt and then see how they're going to handle this whole issue. How long is Nagrat willing to wait until you take the next line of action? We, we expect that at the end of the month, no teacher comes to complain. And so 
if a teacher is going to complain, we want to get a statement from the Minister of Finance telling us how he's going to placate the suffering of that teacher at the end of this month. Yes, and you're expecting all of that by the end of this month? Yes, in, in the moment salaries are paid, we expect that something should happen even before the salaries are paid so that people's minds can be prepared well. Thank you very much for joining us in the studio. Christian Adaipoku is the president of NAGRAD.